Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler, and welcome to part 13 of my great backyard cleanup series. Now, this was supposed to be part 12, but we had that emergency uh, where I had to clear up underneath this tree, and you'll notice the tree is still here. That's because I'm recording this one before the other video is finished. Uh, any of you that have channels and like to stick to a bit of a schedule of putting lots of videos out, and I do two a week, every week, you know you have to kind of keep planning and I've got always got about half a dozen videos in the process of being created. So sometimes you'll see things in the background that in the last video it was dealt with and then suddenly it's still there again. That explains why. So this video, if you remember back in part you know, 11, where we went through what we found in the old van, this video, we're just going to have a look at some of the better things and I'll talk about how I'm going to clean them up and what sort of values we got. I'm not going to go through everything Go back and have a look at that video if you haven't seen it. We were fossicking through boxes and finding all sorts of stuff. A lot of it will just be a quick wash up and in the shop. Uh, I did mention a few prices on a lot of them. But let's have a look at some of the better stuff and see what we're going to do with it. Okay, so here's everything that I've just dumped on the table. And there's some boxes and things over on the rack there. And that dehydrator and the Singer sewing machine drawers. All that sort of stuff, I'm just going to give a bit of a wash and put in the shop. We don't need to go into too much detail there. Um, but what I am going to pick out in this video is just a few of the more special items and how I'm going to clean them up and what they come up like. And a few people commented on various things. I know Street Copper 11 did mention about this old pick. And it's a beauty. It's an early miner's pick. So we'll in this video, we'll clean that up with electrolysis and see how it comes up. Uh, we also have... Um, oh, this tin which I thought was empty. I did open it and it feels really light and it didn't make a noise when you shook it. But inside is a whole heap of old paperwork. Now, I thought it might have been receipts or something, but I went through a few. I haven't, certainly haven't got to the bottom. I only went through the top few. And they're all recipes. They're all old school. And I don't know how old because they're not really dated. But they're all handwritten. Um, recipes. This one's dried apricot jam and it's all handwritten. There's all sorts of things. Onion pickles uh, and really interestingly that some of them are written on the back of old newspaper clippings which I think we might get a date from some of them. I'll see if I can open this one out without tearing it one-handed. No, I have to put the phone down. Give me a tick. Okay, so here was this one. This is boiled fruit cake. Uh, ingredients and a method and it's written on the back of a flyer Cowan and Co's summer cash sale commences January 25 1934 so how good's that now this is some good local history and I'm going to keep this one because I have seen photos of where the old Cowan's uh, general store was it's no longer exists so a 1934 flyer. I'll be really curious to see what else is in here. And we have a handwritten recipe for boiled fruit cake. What I'm going to do with this, I don't think there's really much commercial value on this stuff. But Whoops, I'll pick that up in a minute. But there's going to be some good local history, so I'm going to go through it all pretty carefully and just see what I find. This one is a local football league first schedule to the Secretary East Goulburn Junior Football League. I would assume most of them are going to be 1930s or so. And the recipe on the back of that one is for tomato sauce. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to handball this entire tin full of old recipes to Christine. And she has her own YouTube channel called Christine's Home Affairs. And she does sometimes create some rather interesting experiments we shall say in her kitchen um, she does a lot of low carb recipes and that sort of stuff but she might like to go through this and try and recreate some of the um, well some of the, the things that they're recipes for some of the dishes or some of the um, sauces or cakes and she might also experiment and see if she can like make low carb versions so I'm going to hand this to Christine in one of her future videos and she will no doubt have a lot of fun going through it. But we will check, see if there's any old historic, any more historic information about our local town here. Okay, so here's 
so now that this is all finished, I'm ready to pop this into the oven. Hey, Christine, sorry to interrupt. Hello. I've found treasure. Well, okay. kind of. It doesn't look like much. I want you to make me some 90 year old tomato sauce. <laughs> I've already done the tomato sauce video. Or sweet pickles. These are all Excuse recipes. Interruption. These are all recipes found in an old shed, and okay. one of them's dated 1934 on the back. And I reckon you could go through here and make and, them up and create all um, these well, wonderful old recipes for your subscribers <laughs> and for me to eat. Okay, cucumber and onion pickles coming right up. Beautiful, bring it on. I'll leave <laughs> well, it with you. Cool. All right. I'm out of here. Bye. Okay, thank you. Well, there's another video series. <laughs> All right, so if you want to follow that, you have to go and see Christine's channel, and it might be a while before she gets onto it, but that's the plan. Now, let's have a quick scan through here and pull out anything special that we want to clean up in this video. I think I said when I was going through in the van, most of these are just going to be washed up. Um, some of it might actually just be scrap metal. Uh, some of it I'll keep because I'll have a use for down the track, and I need to try that on a cast iron kettle I've got here. So I don't think there was anything in that box that we wanted or I wanted to focus on. All these 50s era agricultural bits and pieces aren't interesting enough. What was in that? Yeah, I don't think there was anything in there I really wanted to investigate further. But these tins, we're going to try and clean up some of these tins. And I did a video quite a while back on cleaning up some tins with citric acid. So I think we'll try some of these with that as well. Uh, there was some other tins. Where did they go? That's just a bucket. Oh, we want to find out what this powder is. I'll get to that in a minute because it has got something in there. So whether it's got the label from the box that it came in. Um, uh, all that sort of stuff. I'm just going to wash up all the boxes. So that's fine. Uh, down here, there was some more stuff. Uh, here we go. More tins. Yeah, that one was pretty rough. Choices Coffee and Chicory. So we'll try and clean some of these tins up in citric acid and we shall have the results in the end of this video. So, oh, this other thing. Yep, another electrolysis one was this padlock. And I actually went through a box of keys and I found a key that fits it. How's that? I think it worked. Let's check it now. The good thing about these old locks is they're not really high security. There we go, look at that. Sometimes there's only about half a dozen different types of key and locked again. So we're going to clean that one up as well, do some value adding, and we'll work out a price at the end. Uh, there was a couple of tobacco tins in here, but I don't think they were particularly interesting. Uh, okay, here, yeah, I think that was about it. Uh, oh, this one, this was a nice repair outfit tin we might try that in the citric acid and yeah the, pa the pocket knife wasn't good enough all right i think that'll do we've got a few tins to clean up uh we will have a look next to see if we can work out what that white powder was there's another tin and we've got a couple of items for the electrolysis tank i've just cracked the lid it wasn't actually overly tight on this jar Oh, well, it's a bit hard to do one hand. Hang on a tick. Okay, there we go. Now there's a bit of white powder spraying around. Just incidentally, these lids are actually zinc lids, and they have a, a milk glass uh, insert in the top. So if you're wondering what type of lid originally came on these mason's jars, that's what it was. Now there's a bit of cardboard or something in there. I'm hoping it's got written on it what the mystery white powder is and perhaps what sort of street value it will have. Looks like it's an entire envelope. Okay, let's hope it's not toxic. I don't know, maybe if it's anthrax, I'm in trouble. Uh, what's this say? I don't even know what that says. The sticky tape here it's come from a store so it's unlikely that you could buy anthrax or cocaine from a store uh, 
Can we read anything here? I can't really make that out. I'm not sure. But I'm sure it's nothing nasty. It certainly behaves like flour. Let me have a taste. Hang on. Yep. It's definitely flour. There we go. Probably not the most scientific way to test that. But um, hopefully I'm here to do more videos for you. And that note really didn't help as much. But yes, it definitely is flour. I think I'll tip that into Worm Farm. I don't need to use 60, 70 year old flour. All right, so we will wash that jar up. That mason's jar, it's an AG mason's jar. And it's probably 19, oh, it could be 1930s or so. That slot at the bottom is um, to help you undo the lid. Uh, if you were doing a lot of preserving, you'd have a little strap of wood on your table that would line up with that slot and it just helps you do up or undo the lid, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we'll tip that out, though. We'll wash it up. We'll get $20 for that preserving jar. All right, so let's get some uh, other stuff cleaned up. I'll mix up some citric acid shortly, and we shall get something in our electrolysis tank. I might do the pig head first. I've just got them down here in a tub. So we'll do the pig head first. I'll give it a few days. It actually is quite quite badly rusted I don't expect to see any marks on it but it should clean up as far as makers marks go but it should clean up nicely have a really nice old patina and then we'll do the padlock and I'll mix up some citric acid and we'll try those tins okay this pig head has been in the electrolysis bath for about oh, about five days now I've been busy with other things so I've just left it bubbling away I made sure that we had an electrical connection and the bubbles were coming off either end Looks like it's cleaned it up nicely. Let's go and give it a scrub. And in with the padlock. Now I've put the clip on the shackle and that does pivot, of course. So we may not get an electrical connection back to the main body of the lock. I'll have to keep an eye on this, but I might have to do it in a few stages. Uh, and also when we do the body of the lock, the keyhole cover is quite loose, so I don't expect it will connect with that. So we may have to do that separately. Although the brass will polish up quite nicely just with steel wool anyway. There appears to be no corrosion there. So, okay, let's lower the padlock. And here we have commenced our citric acid cleaning of the tins. It took me quite a while to get the tops off those tins. They were rusted on. I did drop the tops in there as well. The only reason for the bottle is just I've filled that with normal water and that just raises the level of the solution to cover the top of the tins. Uh, and I have, oh, there's the other little tin in there somewhere, the cycle repair tins down the bottom. I didn't actually test the tins with the citric acid because they were in such poor condition. They weren't really worth much at all in the current condition. I took some before photos. I'll take some after ones and you can do a comparison. And if you want to have a look at the actual... Um, citric acid experiment the first time I did it I'll put a link up top now showing the uh, the mixture um, ratios and how I actually did it and I did have one failure in that one we'll see how we go here I'll leave this for 24 hours I'll just put a lid on so that no leaves and things fall in there and we'll check that tomorrow and see how well they've cleaned up hopefully it's left the artwork and taken a lot of the rust 24 hours later we'll have a look at what's been going on well, the water's gone a little bit more yellowy. And that one's looking okay. Very good. Now, I've just got some fresh water here. I'm going to soak them in the fresh water uh, until probably tomorrow night when I have a chance to clean them up a bit. So, it looks like it's taken the rust off quite well. So, I can just wipe that. And I wasn't even aware there was writing on the top of that. Uh, it's embossed though, there's no actual paint on the top of that. So really we want to see what the sides of these cans are like. Hmm, okay. Now, that's looking pretty good. We won't really know until we give it a bit of a clean up. It's not going to be perfect because it was quite badly rusted. Now, the rust is very loose there. Now I didn't scrub these or wash these at all. I just put them straight in 
this solution. Yeah, I don't think I'll worry about trying to clean it now. I think we'll just put them in the fresh water to um, to reduce any further acid action. And I'll sprinkle a little bit of bicarb, bicarb soda in here just to neutralize any remaining acid. And then tomorrow I'll take them out of this fresh water and we'll give them a bit of a wash up. It looks like they should have improved. How's this one look? Yeah, okay. It'll be interesting to see how... Oh, that side looks good. Interesting to see how much of the rust actually comes off when we give it more of a clean. Anyway, I'll just keep transferring these into the fresh water. Now, this one looks a bit faded. I wonder if it's actually affected the paint. That side's better than it was, but the blue looks a bit lighter. Anyway, we can't really tell too much for now. We'll give them a good rinse. And we'll get back to them tomorrow and give them a clean out. I don't need this bottle anymore. Oh, that was just fresh water. With this remaining citric acid, I'm just going to tip it into another tub I have here with some rusty bits and pieces. We might as well use it to clean those up a bit before we get rid of it. Yeah, it seems to have cleaned the rust nicely off the lids. Okay, we'll be back here tomorrow night and um, I'll give those a bit of a wash up perhaps and then show you what they look like. And I did take some before photos so we can do a direct comparison. Now I checked this padlock yesterday and I did have to move the clamp because it was only cleaning the shackle. And let's see what it's doing now. If we get a view of that, it looks like it's starting to clean the whole lock. Perhaps not the key cover, but we'll leave it going a bit longer at that. And then I might do one day with the clip just on that little key cover. That'll come up nicely, I think. Okay, it's the next morning. I think we've had a bit of a failure. I actually left these cans out to dry and they all look like this. And I thought, oh, I've totally destroyed them. But they will come back a bit. The either just being in the water for so long or the citric acid has affected the paint and it's all gone quite whitish but then I washed this one up inside and it came back a little bit but then I tried some methylated spirits on it and it seemed to get rid of the white totally and go back to the nice colours so I'm going to do that with the rest of them so this one's not so flash either uh, I clearly need to do more work with this citric acid I mentioned in the first experiment I did have one failure perhaps certain types of paint just don't react very well so I'm glad these weren't valuable tins they were very rough condition anyway I'll clean up clean them up a little bit more and I'll show you what the methylated spirits does as far as taking the whiteness away and we still should get some saleable tins but they certainly didn't improve enormously okay I'll just show you what the methylated spirits does to the white and the only reason I tried this, you can see the colour comes back really nicely there. The only reason I tried this is that when you get white rings on old furniture with a shellac finish, the metho will take them out. And that's actually moisture getting under the shellac. And the metho melts the shellac just slightly and will um, get rid of the moisture. So these are going to come back quite well. But the paint appears to be very thin. Admittedly, there was a lot of rust on these cans. And perhaps no treatment was going to get them back to uh, to a nice condition. But at least we're going to get them back to a saleable position. So this is, this is coming back okay. I'm just dabbing rather than rubbing because I think the paint went quite soft in the citric acid. So that's actually looking pretty good now. And all I'm going to do, see how it looked when I first when they first dried out. I thought I'd totally destroyed them. But the paint is very thin and so what I'm going to do once these dry with the methylated spirits I'm just going to put a little bit of beeswax over them it's a furniture wax actually but it's mostly beeswax and that will just seal them it'll stop them rusting it will give them a little bit more oh, just a sort of a semi gloss and I think it will make them quite saleable so I'm not sure whether to call this a failure or not it certainly removed the rust. The citric acid did take the rust off. Um, you've just got to be very careful with the paint afterwards. Okay, here's the before and after shots I took. You can see there's not really a lot of difference. 
Uh, it certainly took all the loose rust off, but it, uh, look, it, it's not going to bring paint back that's already gone, so I guess that's the point. Um, but I'm still yet to be totally convinced on this citric acid. Uh, it didn't make a lot of difference to that repair it fit in. But anyway, I'll, um, I'll show you what they're like now. It's actually a few weeks later. I haven't got back to finishing this video, but they haven't deteriorated. I did put the beeswax over them, and they're certainly presentable. But um, this one, actually this one looks really good on the back. But you can see that where there was a bit of surface rust, the paint had already gone and the citric acid just took it back to basically tin. So the beeswax should stop them rusting anymore. Uh, and I'll put them in the shop. And look, they're not worthless. We're going to be talking between oh, $10, maybe $20, maybe only $10 for that one. That one might get $20. Great agricultural scene there. Uh, the repair outfit 10 to 15 maybe but anyway just before we finish this video up here's the padlock cleaned up came up really well now all I did with that one was the electrolysis and I just smeared a little bit of beeswax over it I cleaned it as best I could you can see there's some little sort of surface rusty patches in there still but it works very nicely it's um, a lovely old patina now and uh, that should get I reckon I'll put 30 or 40 dollars on that uh, at least 30 anyway so pretty happy with that nice to have a key with it and the old miners pick came up beautifully now I treated this one a little bit differently after the electrolysis I actually sprayed this with just a, a clear lacquer just a cheap pressure pack of clear lacquer and that sealed it well and truly uh, amazing character this has been hand forged it would date to the 1800s and the, the short stubby picks we used down the mines because you had a bit of room to swing we well, didn't have very much room to swing so you needed a shorter pick and the hammer end of it has certainly been used a lot so that's a really nice piece i reckon that's a 30 dollar uh piece in the shop as well and the only other thing was this mason's preserving jar that we had that mysterious white powder that turned out to be flour uh, that cleaned up very nicely and that'll be a 20 dollar one as i mentioned so thanks for watching guys that concludes another in the series of my great backyard cleanup uh, we've got the van now usable to store some other stuff in which is handy and I've still got to move a little bit of timber in there and the, the old mattress I'll get rid of that I'm actually going to relocate the van around the other side of that fence there um, I'm standing in the rear lane the main yard is back there but by moving the van around I can then access the shipping container you can see up there and I'm going to clean up the rest of this area and also the van has a, a sliding door on the opposite side which I kind of can't get to at the moment so if I put the van around the other corner uh, at least we'll be able to access the sliding door as well and it's handy extra storage in my yard uh, it's going to be probably a video episode on its own moving the van because it's not operational and I'm going to have to winch it round somehow so we might make a video out of that as well okay thanks for watching guys um, this was episode 13 I think if I remember rightly I might be one out there look out for the next one we'll be doing something in the yard and hopefully some more improvements so I'll catch you next time bye for now